Hey folks, new project here in the shop today. It's uh, rainy, so I'm gonna try to talk loud and mostly do this handheld. So, this is a wood splitter. It was a scabby old thing. Frame is good, pump is good, reservoir is good. It was uh, set up as a tractor three-point hitch, but I wanna make it, you know, uh, electric and self-propelled, you know, while I'm at it. So this is a golf cart transaxle that's gonna go under the heavy end of the machine. There's a motor, old Curtis controller that was kicking around. And uh, then the splitter mechanism, so the propulsion traction side is battery electric, and then the hydraulics is AC electric with this big ass, what is this, a seven, five, seven kilowatt motor? Dun, dun, dun. It says seven and a half horsepower, so five kilowatt, relatively slower. This is a 1700 RPM AC induction motor single phase so the control box scavenged from some other application uh, is basically just push buttons uh, that'll go because I don't think I need low voltage AC I haven't really figured this part out yet except to order a larger uh, breaker from or motor protection uh, circuit breaker from eBay thank you to people who take the time to salvage industrial gear and put it on eBay so we don't have to pay full price. And then the, so this vein pump, which although it's not the highest pressure type of pump, um, I ran this splitter before tearing it down and it worked fine with this, uh, I think this is a four inch nominal ram with maybe 20, 24 inch stroke. So that motor driving that pump and then the reservoir and valve will all sit on the frame. The control box will sit above the motor somewhere so you can turn it on. And you can drive it from near one building where there's 240 volt AC to near another building. And uh, the way we manage firewood here is we always bring trees home as intact lengths and then we buck them up and split them in the yard. So having a, an electric splitter, you know, if, it, if it'll run at five kilowatts, probably one kilowatt most of the time and peaking at five periodically, uh, seems a lot more interesting than having a diesel tractor running steadily with a 40 or 50 kilowatt engine doing next to nothing. But if I can figure out how to do so, I'm also gonna include in the mix a uh, PTO input shaft so that if I want to and I think I'll put a I'll put a triangle oh sorry I'll put a quick hitch triangle back on this thing so it can be moved around with the tractor and uh, if possible also be driven by the tractor for the hydraulic component so we'll see this is a caster wheel assembly maybe off a zero turn though it's not it's got no caster I'm not sure what it's from I found it in a pile of parts but uh, the tire is already silicone filled and flat proof so that's got some potential and it's heavy so I'm gonna try to put that under the uh, the light end and then make some kind of tiller for it tiller with a hand throttle and then you'll be able to steer it by walking along that end and steering the tiller wheel and twisting the throttle. That's the idea. All right, let's see how it goes. So modifying the uh, hubs, just in case anyone thought I knew what I was doing. Here's manually hole sawing out the pilot. And now I shifted it by walking into it. So yeah, hardly uh, super refined guards, you know, use them sometimes. They can be handy. But yeah, surprisingly not bad for barely making a jig and 
looks adequate for this purpose. So these came out okay, switching from standard four bolt pattern to the very strange three bolt pattern of this uh, golf cart axle, but worked out all right. I tried to do it sloppy and quick and wasn't happy, so I drilled out the pilots and then drilled and chamfered these and looks pretty good. That's adequately straight and flat. It's not exactly gonna be a speedy machine. And uh, yeah, and these are a super common size. I don't know what these wheels came off of. Maybe a rototiller or something. They were just in my pile of spares. So yeah, if, uh, if the cracking that I saw on this one gets worse, I can surely get spares, but that'll probably last 20 years. Anyway, next. So, <clears throat> got the wheels onto the transaxle. I also found the drum brake so that when this, uh, use it as parking brake, so it's on the input side of the diff, I think. It's driven, must be driven off the reduction gear. I can't see anything. Reduction gear is right there inside the diff. Okay. And that same spindle must drive the, um, the parking brake. <clears throat> so this is all looking good, good to go. Clean up the brake a little bit, because, you know, why not? And then, before putting the motor back on, um, I remembered that uh, Alain Saint-Yves, who gave me this motor and is usually right about these things, recommended that I clean it up in case there was gunk in it. I had tested it and it spun fine and wasn't making any noise and bearings felt tight, but he's right. Before putting it back together uh, and putting it back into service, clean it up. It was pretty oily inside, probably from uh, this seal leaking. There's a shaft seal in the drive end case, but uh, it's not fantastic. I think it's rubber. Uh, anyway, I'll at least polish this part of the shaft that runs through the rubber seal. But it gives a good overview of what a small, medium, series wound traction motor looks like. So brush holder on the non-drive end. The case comes apart in these three pieces. So this is an old GE series wound motor. Um, the nameplate is pretty hard to make out, but with magnifying, I got model number 5BC48JB187F, and uh, the other indications are maybe temp rise, 75, this is the, or the rating temp, that uh, it can do one and a half horsepower at 36 volts, uh, probably continuous without exceeding 75 degrees Celsius, at uh, full speed at 36, I'm guessing this is RPM and amperage to not exceed the 75. And 3122, don't know what it is. Maybe it's free RPM. Uh, and then a Dana part number and LDN, maybe it's factory or something. So this motor is a not ventilated version of the 48JB187, or I'm not sure how the series numbers work for... Um, for GE, but the brushes get completely covered. There's no air intake and there's no air outlet and there's no fan element on the armature. So any heat that is uh, generated in the motor has to be dissipated through the case. Um, so even though you can see these are pretty big, like the field windings are substantial. This same motor ventilated could probably be rated for close to 100 amps continuous, um, but in this instance. And the brushes, uh, I have a, a more recent version of a similar General Electric motor. It's got appreciably bigger brushes, but the brushes and com, commutator here are obviously limiting factors, but 48 amps continuous, that's pretty good. And uh, you know, this, for this application, I, it's a non-issue. This motor is way oversized for what I want it to do, and it's gonna be 
of the most occasional use kind of application. So some parts are cleaned up and I gotta finish, I'm gonna take the brush holder out, clean it, and clean the, the non-drive end, and uh, then clean up the armature shaft a bit, throw this all together, and slap it onto the axle. It's gonna be a pretty, uh, pretty cute little drivetrain. Okay, let's get to it. Well, that's looking pretty good. Brush holders all back in. Springs are not yet mounted, but all the brushes are clean and sliding nicely in the tracks. This one's reassembled. The other one isn't brass. I'm gonna scrounge around and see if I can. So these are the connectors. They go, they connect to this lead, which runs to to do one of the two pairs of, uh, or it leads to one of the brush, one of the brushes, and then it's isolated from the case by these insulators, like that stack, one on the inside, a donut for going through the wall, and then another one. But this is a, this one is steel, and it's got a mucked up thread, so I got to find a replacement for it. Otherwise. It's good to go. So that's pretty good. Um, we got, I wrote down the codes for the drive end bearing and the non drive end. And uh, the brushes are all, hold on, where's that headlamp? Brushes are all nicely seated. Commutator's good. What else? Yeah, drive pulleys back on. I polished the shaft where it passes through the um, rubber seal and then I put some uh, waterproof grease on it hoping that that'll diminish the flow and then I'm also going to reseal, I'm going to make a new gasket for this face where they mate. But I'll uh, give it a spin on 12 volts, make sure all is well and then throw the brush cover back on and then stick it on the axle. All right, found a crappy 12 volt battery that's dead enough that it's barely working, but I'm charging it at the same time. And motor spins up, brushes are quiet. Granted, this is low voltage, but running very smoothly. I'm happy with that. I'm probably only gonna run it at 24 volts in the uh, application that I'm designing. So great, that's half speed and that's uh, lovely. I'm happy, motor can go back into service. Okay, so it's all ready to go. Got voltage, got a charger because this lead battery is crap. Runs it up to 14, but as you'll see, as soon as I start pulling from it, uh, the charger will kick out. And but we also have a clamp meter on the one of the two 
leads. And we have enough clearance. And begin. 30 amps, 12, 12 and a half. Now we've lost the charger. Battery voltage is dropping. But wheels are spin, spin, spinning. 18 amps, 19. Chargers cutting in and out based on some uh, maybe an overcurrent protection. 17 amps, 18 amps. All right. Running well by my reckoning. I'm happy with that. Let's put it on a wood splitter.